been kind of slow period kind of almost took off for a week hard getting concrete in the city been doing some work got almost these final six little tanks and these foundations done uh, finishing up the top layers as you see here each one of them is on this side is basically a four by eight tank split in two of an eight by eight foundation and you see they put the outer exterior they still got to put the inner lining we're just waiting for the concrete and to get the sealant to go ahead and put the waterproof lining inside a little luck these will be done in a few days be ready to start putting the broken tile in it you can see this one here is a seven by seven foundation so broken half it will have uh, two three and a half foot by eight or seven foot uh, tanks here and then this is the last one this is also an eight by eight they're putting this on right now they just stopped so I could come here and take a shot you can see how they put the outer coating first they have to chip down the corner edges of the hollow block then they come in and put the square line on it it's mainly just purely for aesthetics that's all and this one here is also divided once again in the middle they're getting this ready just apply the top ring on this one here and you can see inside here these are also a four by eight tank these six tanks will be for my food production. And here will be brine shrimp, probably in these two. This one over here will have uh, will have regular shrimp, and this one here, these two. And then that one over there will have my rotifers and my copleopods. And I'll use variations of all the feed amounts that are used off of here which I'll use to feed my stage three to stage four lobsters, larvae. I've been putting in and getting ready, as you see here, if you look up over there, here and over there, I've started getting ready to put my three inch uh, downspout drains. Uh, the gutter system inside this facility, because we dropped this roof down inside the building so it'd be protected, and there's no need to build a second level yet so we put in this temporary gutter system it's actually four 35 foot gutters this one over here will carry the water from here it'll go out through the back go along that back wall and then carry out through that window where there'll be a rack of, uh, of uh, 55 gallon drums to hold the rainwater the one over on this side will also start from here and it will also drain and will go out through that window to the same drums. The two front 35 foot uh, heavy drains, the gutter system, will come out of this one here and this side will go out through the front of the building over there. And this side over here will come out and go out through the front over there where they'll be holding barrels over there and holding barrels over there. And those holding barrels in these three locations over on that side here and out the back window over here will feed greenhouses and also the gardens and landscape and lawns because there's no fresh water here. So trapping all this rainwater will come in handy Still got a little bit of fill to still come in on my uh, last of my guttering that's right along in here. I can show you the depth of the gutter. Hang on a second. Let me move here. You can actually still see a small section of the pipe. You can see it right there. And that is drilled and runs the full length from out the back, or out the front I mean. It comes along here, goes behind the tanks runs out along, out over there, around the foundation behind where those racks of trays are, and then runs along the back of the tanks running all the way out here and out through the front. 
The reason for those is because here we can get some incredible rains. Sometimes they can last almost non-stop for it seems like a week or two. So if for some reason if we have any type of catastrophic failure, or we have excessive leaking, any overflow from these gutters will come down, hit into the French drain, or behind the, coming down off the back wall over there and comes down. It will come down, hit the drains, all of it will be pushed out through the front of the building here, or it will be directed out to the holding barrels in the three different stations there. Now, the floor, which we're fixing to start grading, would be leveled. It'll come up with a slight berm edge, and then it will taper off flat. And then here will be where my various sump type, uh, floor sumps will be set up so that all the water that's being discharged from my racks, from my trays, and my tanks through their overflows will collect in the sumps, and all the sump pumps that will direct all this water will go over to that first tank that you see right over there, which will be my holding tank. Then a pump will take it out, take it to my protein skimmers. The water that comes through the protein skimmers will collect in the second tank, a pump will take it from there, run it up and through my multiple rack of sand filters. The water that collects there will be picked back up and then brought back to this secondary tank here. I explained this before, I believe, in uh, number 10, I think it was. You can go in that in detail. I'm just a quick rundown. The water here will be my holding. As I drain the water off about once a week, I'll drain a portion of the water off then I'll top it from this tank over. The storage water in here is strictly to acclimate the water to temperature and to be able to store fresh, clean water even when we're having the heavy rains and the waters surrounding here are brackish. This will be clean, pure uh, seawater that's actually at the same temperature as that that will be operating in my closed system. Now the pump from here will pick up the water and it will be pumped over to here. There'll be dual 55-gallon uh, drums, three tiers, so a total of six. The water will come in through the top. Basically, I'll have centrifugal downflow through the barrels. I'll have a jacuzzi pump over there and a jacuzzi pump over here. This jacuzzi pump on the left is what supplies the water to everything inside the facility. The jacuzzi, the jacuzzi pump on the right side is merely to take that water and return water back to this tank and keep it all moving in a flow. Well, the reason why is that this doesn't get pressurized. The water will circulate continuously between it and uh, the, the primary working rack or working tank, I like to call it, and my secondary working tank will be closed and be running loop continuous. As the trays, the racks, and the lobster and breeding tanks and my food based tanks for my production are requiring water the pump that will be on this side will take care of all of this then all the water that collects into these sumps will be all kicked back over to this tank where it'll go through the three filter go through the two filtrations up through a uv light and then it gets returned back over to here then the water that comes from here will pick up, go back through another UV light, and it will in turn go back in here. There'll be a third UV light, which will go for the exterior water that's brought directly from the sea into this pump here, and then it will be recirculating back through, so it's constantly being recirculated through the UV light. That will sterilize the water, minimize any possible pathogens and try to keep my water as contaminant free as possible so it won't affect my stage one through my stage four lobsters I'll be maintaining here. Then once everything is taken out of my pots at stage one through three where they'll go, they'll be taken out of there, they'll be put into my tray racks for my stage four grow outs. When they're done with the stage four grow outs, they'll be picked up from here and then they will be moved out to the saltwater pond 
that is directly back there where there'll be floating net cages back there in a platform and that's where we grow out going from stage four into stage five and on. Then there'll be floating platforms out here in the seaside out here on the outside along the whole outer lining and those will be for my stage eight on probably through stage 11s out there. At any one of these particular sizes or stages uh, they will be for sale. I expect to be able to produce three crops out of here. I will be holding five female lobsters and two males in my lobster tanks. Then I will take them out. I'll put them into my breeding tank, my breeding tank. I can control the temperature with no problem. And I can control the light. And I can provide them the diet necessary so that the females will be mated just lightly after their molting season. And then once they moat, then they will, the larvae, once they're released, will collect over to this end over here. Uh, female lobster, uh, the orientatus, what they call the fancy uh, ornate spiny lobster, can release so anywhere between 300,000 and 400,000 eggs at one release. Uh, in 2002, a New, New Zealand study took one female, she produced three times in one year, they documented 1.6 million eggs, of which 101 went post larval. So one female, if treated properly, and everything set up properly, can technically produce 1.1 million eggs in one breeding cycle. So with five females properly uh, sized, properly treated with proper diet and properly maintained I should be able to at least get three full uh, larval stages out of this tank and into my pots and my trays that's the intent so it's coming along nicely I started making the bamboo trays for this rack here as I get a little bit further on and there's more to see I'll start a video on that and I can show you how that works I'll also be posting uh, some photos of that as I start doing it uh, this last week I pretty much because of materials being hard to get a hold of and actually after four and a half almost five months of just going at this full fledge it was nice to just take almost a week it's just to sit back and relax, look at what I'm doing and thinking and just taking it easy. So now that I've had a good rest cycle, it's time to get back up and get started on this. So it should be interesting on the next video. I'm not going to go in too much more detail. I don't want to be too redundant. Uh, please look at the past videos and you can follow this process as it's been going through. And as I always say, until next time, Y'all have a good one now.